Hey guys, welcome to the Testing Academy. My name is Pramod and welcome to the part 4 of Selenium Java interview questions and answers. First of all, I would like to tell you that if you haven't watched part 1, part 2 and part 3, then I will highly recommend you to watch this uh, part because those contains more than 51 plus questions and in this video we are going to cover 10 plus more questions and which are advanced level so I would highly recommend to watch previous parts so that you can get the knowledge of the previous uh, interview questions and answers all right so let's get started all right so uh, one of the things that uh, most of the time the interviewer asks is about what are the major limitations of Selenium means you have used Selenium uh, even as a uh, experience for example you have uh, have more than two years experience four years of experience means what are the major limitations that you have encountered so uh, first of all the main important thing is that uh, Selenium doesn't support testing of desktop apps and mobile apps right and if you want to test mobile apps that you can use APM which uh, uh, uses this uh, similar kind of lab, uh, similar kind of a Selenium but yeah you cannot do it and you cannot test the native features of your OS right uh, using Selenium so overall what I mean is that uh, Selenium only support the testing of web applications where web applications mostly runs on the browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Safari and IE right so uh, these are the things uh, are the major limitations of Selenium Another Im uh, important limitation is that uh, it doesn't support CAPTCHA or barcode readers means uh, you have to if you have to test these things then you have to do is what you have to do is that you have to use certain custom libraries or you have to basically kind of uh, bypass these features to, te to test uh, if they are coming into your test right so these are the major limitations right another impo uh, important important uh, limitation that when it's come to selenium is that it doesn't provide support for reports right if you use selenium definitely you are not gonna see great reports in your test cases so what you have to do is that you have to implement certain third-party tools like for example you can use test ng test automation or j unit uh, reports which are going to help you to see what are the test results of your uh, basically selenium test cases that you have done. so these are the major limitations that i have seen and uh, let's move on to the question number two so uh, this is an important question because uh, selenium grid uh, most of the time we use for parallel execution and multiple browser support right so when we uh, so the question is that when should we use this right so you generally use to execute the test case on different machines right and it's, it basically supports distribu distributed test execution so what you can do is that you can have a machine which is running a hub right and you can connect different nodes and nodes are nothing but separate machines on the same network which can con connect to connect to this hub and now a node can be a windows machine and node 2 can be another machine with linux uh, running certain browsers right so now if you pass the correct desired capabilities and then your hub can redirect to the particular uh, capabilities that you have provided right so uh, that is one of the important way to use the selenium grid and it also supports parallel execution so that uh, you can have certain uh, test cases running on chrome or firefox along with it right it saves your times right so let's move on to the question number three and what it is uh, important one which is that how do you test the local storage of your browser right using selenium so uh, local storage are basically certain key value pairs that are stored in your uh, that are mostly used to store certain sometimes cookies value sometimes for example if you have uh, uh, used any kind of e-commerce website and uh, you do add to cart and all the things right these are all this information are basically most of the time stored in local storage and after that uh, on the checkout page these information are basically get and uh, uh, you will have certain bills and all right so what you can do is that you can use uh, you can leverage the javascript executor of selenium and we have inbuilt methods uh, generally available windows.local storage uh, it's a javascript code but yeah uh, you can use javascript uh, class to basically uh, get these details from java uh, from your uh, to your test case right and you can use get item as well as you can use set item and pass the key value pair right all right so uh, another interesting question that has been asked like most of the time is that how to handle iframe within iframe so suppose you have an iframe 1 and you have iframe 2 within this iframe so what you can do is that you can use this command which is very uh, not known most of the time but yeah 
uh, it can help you if you are automating certain web application with OTP, right? So most of the time, whenever we are thinking about uh, OTPs, for example, the last uh, point where uh, most of the time OTP, OTP comes, one time password, these are the third party libraries or certain kind of web forms, right? And these are iframes within your iframes. So what you can do is that you can leverage switch to method and pass the iframe ID. And after that, you can use again the iframe, right? So this is how you can do it. Now, so let's uh, come to the question number five, which is an important one that we have already discussed. How do you start a hub and a node in Selenium Grid? So as we know that we have already discussed, right? Selenium Grid provides parallel execution and executions on different machines and platforms, right? So what you, how can you use, how you can use this, right? So most of the time interviewer asks means what are the commands that you need to use? So what you can do is that you can tell them to start a node. What you need to do is that you need to pass, uh, you need to download this uh, Selenium standalone jar from Selenium dev, uh, selenium.dev website here. Right, and what you can do is that you can use Java minus jar and your jar file, and after that you can mention the role is hub. Right. Similarly, if you want to connect this uh, this particular node to this hub, what you can do is that you can use role is equal to node, and after that uh, with hyphen hub you need to pass the IP of your uh, hub with the basically uh, URL of grid register. So you need to register your node to the hub. Now, after registering, your node will be re registered to this hub. Now you will run any kind of test case. Then depending upon the desired capabilities that you have given, this hub will redirect to a respective node, right? This is you can. This is how you leverage the Selenium grid. It's very uh, easy and most people are right now not using it. And but in interview, people are generally asking this about it. So you can tell them these two commands and the concepts of Selenium grid, right? Now. The important question is that uh, what, how do you upload or download a file using Selenium Grid, Selenium Web Driver, right? So you, you can use send keys to do that, right? So you, what you need to do is that you need to find the particular ID class, any kind of locator mechanism of your uh, input uh, input tag. So most of the time, what will happen is that whenever you are uploading a file, this there is an input tag which has a type of file. Right now, you need to find the ID class, any kind of unique identifier or locator strat using any kind of locator strategy uh, to this element. And after that, you can use send keys method and the path of your file. Right. So, a uh, very interesting thing is that most of the time, these in sometimes due uh, as you as I have seen that lots of websites are using advanced CSS, right, and JavaScript method. So. The input tag is hidden most of the time and we and they have basically modified with some uh, CSS or you can say that so before that before uh, uploading you need you can use a simple logic of unhiding that also you can google that uh, logic but uh, you will get to know about it right all right this is an interesting question and most of the time it has been asked is that how do you handle this kind of behavior where we have certain dynamic you know, X paths are created, right? For example, if we go to Google and we do search for Vaseline Web Drive Driver, we're going to give you some auto suggestions, right? And these are Ajax requests. So very interesting way to do that is very simple. Uh, generally, what we have seen is that uh, there is a dynamic number with the TR table row, right? So what you can do is that you can loop around until you get a no exception. You can put that or your logic into try catch. And uh, you can uh, basically loop till you get no such a element exception and you can use string suggestion is equal to driver find by ID and dynamically pass the, the I here, right? So let me show you if I'm using this marker, right? So we have a dynamic I. So we are going to run uh, from I is equal to one to I plus one and we are going to use a try logic, right? And after that, we are going to uh, basically run this until we get some no such exception. So the exception will be catch here, right? So till we get the exception, this logic will run, right? And this will basically going to create the dynamic path and we are going to get the text of it. So this is how you will get the all the suggestion using Google one, right? Pretty much easy, right? Means uh, I'll share the slide so you can uh, have a more look into it, right? All right. So uh, another interesting question, uh, let's go come to it's a seventh question, which is how to handle multiple browsers or windows. 
uh, it's very straightforward what you can do is that you can use the driver.get window handles it, it is going to give you a all the handles right and all the handles we are putting into set and so because these are unique right and after that for example if i have three tabs open or two tabs open now the index will be 0 1 2 right and you can use the switch to method to switch to these windows right this is how you can achieve it now uh, if there, uh, if this is another interesting way means you can use a function to highlight your selenium web driver element you can use this met uh use this method right it is not most of the time asked in interview question but yeah uh i have seen uh, people are asking about it right so to means how do i see which element is getting uh, clicked or not while uh, performing the selenium web driver test cases so you can use this method to do that right all right so uh this is the ninth question which is how to initialize the gecko web driver and chrome web driver let me it's getting trimmed so okay let me put it here all right yeah so uh, you can use very interesting a uh, very simple method which is system dot uh, set properties in case of java right so you can mention the web driver dot gecko web driver and you can mention your drivers here and after mentioning this web driver according to the path they are going to initialize right and uh, there is an interesting way means how do you verify the tooltip what you can do is that if you there's a tooltip which basically comes whenever we try to uh, hover over it right so you can use action builder class and you can do click and hold method uh, with some offsets so that that's way you'll get the tooltip and after getting the tooltip what you can do is that you can use any kind of get attribute to get the title any kind of text of this tooltip right so this is how you do the automation of your tooltip right so uh, uh, these are certain 10 questions that uh, I think uh are important and uh, these are the part these are in the part four and uh don't forget to subscribe guys if you haven't subscribed and please share like and do these videos basically these videos will keep me motivated right and if you have any kind of question related to selenium java interview question do let me know in the comments i'm going to reply back and we have a facebook group go to the facebook.com slash group slash testing academy or you can see the links on descriptions go join them have a discussion there let's learn selenium java api testing and all along with it right all right guys thanks a lot for watching this video and see you in the next video bye